everyone and welcome back to another video in this channel. My name is Abraham Leal and today my internet is back. So uh, I was lucky enough and the uh, internet company fixed the stuff. It's a good thing, but anyways, we got the internet back and we're back with one of your favorite series, which is Portfolio Review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the submissions from December. As you guys know, I always um, like modify this so that we get whoever submitted first gets first to go. So today we're going to be reviewing one, two, three, four, five, and uh, for tomorrow or for tomorrow's video, we're going to have uh, the remaining uh, six. So um, I always make this message. I always tell you guys on the channel, but I, we always get the same questions and that's fine. How do you submit for portfolio review? At the end of portfolio review, so tomorrow's video, at the end of tomorrow's video, I'm going to open up the submissions for January. And from that point onwards, if you go to the link that's going to be linked on most of the videos, you can drop a little folder like all of the people did here and write a little message, give me your link or show me what stuff you're working on and I'll be happy to give you a review. These reviews are, of course, my personal opinion. The, it's always like you can always debate whether or not I have the uh, like right, right motives or not. Uh, I always try to focus on the technical side of things, not so much on the design side of things. Uh, but yeah, so let's start with the darkness right here and let's take a look at the little message. Hello, hello Abraham, how are you? If you will be able to provide some feedback on my portfolio, such as what should be removed or general comments, that would be greatly appreciated. A Robin, a Robin Tomar. Robin T. Omar, I don't know, let's take a look. Okay, okay, nice. So you're in New Delhi, India. Awesome. Let's take a look. Let's start with the katana right here. This looks like a really, really, really pretty katana. I, I like it. Uh, 1100K triangles. It's great for, for games. I was going to mention that because the uh, first thing I see is that the texture resolution is a little bit low. I would probably do a 4K texture just for the sake of it, just for pre presentation sakes. This is a, a very important tip. Whenever you present your stuff, you always want to present it in the best possible way. So if you can do 4K textures, do 4K textures. Because if I see that you can do 4K textures, I know that we can downgrade those textures to 2K or 1K or like 512 pixels. Like we can downgrade things, but it's a little bit difficult to upscale things. Okay, so this one, you can definitely get away with a 4K texture and that's fine. And eventually for performance sake, you can just downgrade it. Uh, but this one looks really great. I think the blade looks a little bit dull. Um, everything looks like relatively new, but the blade looks a little bit dull. I would probably like to see some of this like anisotropy things, like this like banding of the metal because this looks like sandpaper on this thing. I'm not sure if it's the render. It doesn't seem to be the render because as you can see right here, it does look grainy, right? And I think you might want to go for a sharper effect. I, I do think this is a strong piece, so I wouldn't, I would not take this out, but if you can fix that, that would be great. Uh, sniper rifle from Metro Exodus. Okay. So the hard surface thing, man, looks great. I'm, I'm hard surface is not my favorite thing to do to, to be honest, but this looks really, really cool. The welding, ooh, that's amazing, man. The welding looks really, really, really good. Um, I do feel like some things like this cables right here, they don't seem to like really be holding it as, as tightly. Uh, they, they, they seem a little bit loose, so I'll probably just change that. But other than that, uh, I think a great exercise would be to try to uh, retopologize this and. Uh, and texture it because it's a it's a really good model. I like it. Really, really good management of uh, of workflow. Now, if you're gonna keep it, if you don't want to go all the way and um and, and redo it or, or re rework it, one of the advices is uh, show me the wireframe. Show me a wireframe render, even if it's high poly, that's fine. Just show me a wireframe render so that I can see how you're uh, approaching certain topology things. But it looks really good. I like it. I wouldn't take that one out either. Vintage Tiffin box. Okay. Interesting. It's a simple asset. Uh, there's this like general advice that I give. If you can, if you if you can do the asset that you're showing fast, it might not be the best idea to have it here. Like if this took you what three four hours to do for modeling UVs and textures, it might not be a portfolio piece. So this one I would probably take it out because without more context, it just looks like a pretty model texture. Okay, so another thing is careful on the thumbnails, guys. Thumbnails are really important. So for instance, this thing right here, I, I really don't know. I don't know what a Tiffin box is, to be honest. So if I just see this, it, it just looks weird, right? So I'll probably do a thumbnail where I can see the whole asset. Um, again, a wireframe would be great. Uh, I can see that there's a 4K texture. So we, like, again, seeing a wireframe would be amazing. 
Uh, I can also see this is a little bit old, which is fine. So it might be a little bit difficult to go back, but I would probably take this one out because these guys are a little bit stronger. This looks really good as well. Um, AK triangles, that's really nice. That's a really nice bake actually for, for this thing. AK is still a little bit high, but I can see the complexity of these things. Ooh, this is a beautiful UV map. Great. <laughs> okay, so um, this is the kind of thing that can be a hit or miss. I personally am a fan of anime, so I actually recognize a couple of these guys. But uh, the problem is it does look a little bit unprofessional, right? If it was me, I was like, oh, cool, that's nice. But if it's like a high executive person in a, in a high like top studio, they'll be like, oh, what's this guy thinking? Why, why is he doing this, right? So... Uh, it could be a hit or miss. It, it could be the other way around. Like a, a small studio lead like myself could be like, oh, what's this guy thinking? And then a high studio executive would be like, oh, cool. He likes this anime. That's nice. So since it's a hit or miss, I would probably not do this. Okay. So just, I mean, you, you already have a nice render. So so no, no need to to add this guys right here. Okay. Uh, keep the keep the model though. It's a great model. This is beautiful. I, as, I, as soon as I saw the thumbnail, I was like, this is great. Um, but, but, um, I would love to see how many polygons we have again. Wireframes. Wireframes are really important to, to judge the, the content. I can see a little bit of the wireframes here, um, which is it's just fine, but I would love to see the wireframes here. The texture, man, it's a great, great texture job. I love this little, little rust details and stuff. You have a great, great, like, precise uh, uh, attention to detail, which is really, really important. This is where I would probably give the one self division to this thing if you can afford it on the triangles. Um, otherwise, then yeah, it's fine. It does look a little bit glossy, like um, like I can see a little bit of like reflections here. So I'm not sure if you're using Marmoset. Seems like you are. Uh, if you were using the ray tracing option, some of these shadows should be like darkened a little bit more because the the plastic is a little bit off compared to the rest of the materials everything's very like dusty and rusted and this plastic is not as much so i'll probably just fix that one as well and uh, yeah that's pretty much it i can see that you have a couple of working progress here let's take a look okay again not bad um but it's a simple asset right like it's a good asset it's a good model it's a good texture but it's a simple asset so if you have multiple of these assets, combine them in a single scene or in a single project, and that it's going to make all of them look better than just like a single line. Cool. Let's go with the next one. Rabi Saini. Look at the tags. Hi, next dude. I am Ravi Saini, a game designer and artist from India. Here's the link to my work, and thanks for your kind support. You're welcome, my friend. Always happy to help. Let me take a look at some of your work from 2019. Nice. <laughs> Very common uh, exercise. I teach this quite a bit. Proportions are way off, way, 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 way off. But I like the fact that you model it, texture it, and get it rendered. Like, understanding the process before, like, polishing, it's a good idea. But, yeah, the proportions are really, really way off. Um, this is not bad. It's a little bit better. What are you using? Oh, 3D Studio Max. I'm actually not well-versed in the 3D Studio Max, so I won't be able to give you as many feedbacks there. But let's take a look at your art station. Okay, so uh, similar, similar, um, what the word, advice to what I gave um, the last uh, student. If it's a simple stuff, you either want to combine it with multiple things or uh, show a different effect. I like the clear render cube, but we need a little bit more light. If you can take a look at this, you can see that the light is very, very, very soft. I always like to have a main light that gives me some nice, interesting shadows. Uh, because this looks a little bit like it looks like an overcast, right? Like these guys are also a little bit a little bit too dark. The low poly is fine. It's a little bit high. Uh, I can see like the amount of triangles that we have right here. I know what you did it and uh, why you did it this way, and I can see that you are following like the proper like triangulation and stitching things, but still a little bit high. Like we can definitely like um, like smooth this out a little bit more. It's not gonna look as nice, but we can uh, bring it down. This is what you want. So I would probably either texture the other one or remove it and keep this one right here because this looks way, way better. It's just a finished product. Now, again, whenever you're doing this sort of finished products, guys, always try to get them into a scene. It's very easy. It's very, very easy to just do this, right? Like just do a nice cinematic render like this, like the knife, wooden board stuck there, maybe like one of the grenades that you have right there, like a picture, a photo. Like if you can, if you can tell a small story with your things, People are gonna remember them, remember them a little bit more because right now I'm just seeing a good, good prop, good textures. Uh, let me see if there's topology. 
I'm expecting there to be good topology. It's a good model. I'm not saying this is a bad model, but if you can just do that little extra where this thing is integrated into a scene, into a, a like again, like a table or just like a cinematic thing, it just pops more, right? It, it gives you an edge over everyone else. So, so think about that. Like this, like you, you were going uh, the right, like, yeah, like this. This is perfect. Like a box, even though it's just a, a, a floor, it just looks like it's somewhere, right? It's not just floating like on the on nothingness. It's it's somewhere. Um, this one has one of the most common mistakes that I uh, always tell my students about. Your metal edgeware is everywhere and you don't have that normally. Also, if it's made out of wood, you wouldn't get a metal edgeware. You would get a wood edgeware. If it's painted wood or it's like a sticker or something, then yeah, fine. However, uh, you definitely want to remove some of that metal edgeware because it shouldn't be everywhere. It should be like strategically placed in the areas that are going to be damaged the most. Take a look at the last student. He was very, again, uh, he had a very good attention to detail. That's the kind of stuff that we're going to go for. Careful with the intensity of the bump map. This is way, way too much bump map. It's corroding the whole thing and it looks very aggressive. So probably don't want to do that. This is a little bit closer to what I'm um, expecting, oh, like a little scene, but just add a little bit more, like again, like a picture, a photo, a little lamp, uh, like a mantle or something, like things that make the scene more like something that you would find on the game, okay? Again, bump, it's a little bit too high. You can see the uh, the grunginess on the on the bump detail right there. Uh, the, the low poly here is very low poly. If you're doing this on V-Ray, which I can see you're doing it here, you can definitely throw in a subdivision modifier. No, no reason not to not to do that. Also, the glossiness is a little bit too high, so I would probably tweak around some of the values as well. So far, I, again, again, these three pieces are fine. They just need to be tweaked a little bit more. This, very good. I can and I can see it's it's very obvious when I see like the earlier works and then the later works how people improve. But it's important that if you're improving, you either go back and uh, and tweak some of those things or just start like slowly curate them so that you don't have everything from the from the earlier years. This is looking better. Now the render needs a little bit more work because it's a very, um, I would say like kind of like a boring render. Um, careful here with this seam lines. Uh, it's very easy to fix the seam lines inside of Substance Painter by uh, using the Triplanner projection. I've, I've shown that before here in the channel. Take a look at some of the texturing courses and the things that I've done and, and you're gonna be able to find it. And uh, yeah, but this one is uh, it's looking good. I, I like this one. Again, I think if you integrate this on, on a scene, it will look better. This one's good as well. It's good as well. I like this. Good textures. Good. Uh, topology is nice. It's not that high, so that's great. And then this is what I was uh, going for. Like this sort of scenes, they they look way better, right? Because there's a lot of stuff and it makes for a more interesting uh, effect. Now I can definitely see that you're kind of like spreading out the same thing. I would encourage you to try doing something different. Uh, we all have like things that we really like. I can see that you really like like warfare and, and stuff like uh, World War II and, and stuff like that. So that's fine. But try to do maybe something sci-fi, maybe something... Uh, prehistoric, like play around with with the kind of elements so that your portfolio also has a wider um, a wider reach. Okay, but uh, yeah, keep up the wor good work, Ruby. Uh, looking looking good. So before we move on, I just want to remind you guys that if you want to learn about three D, you can do so by using our very special promo in Skillshare. Hey guys, Abraham here. I just want to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve, and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here. And Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check skill shirt down here below there we go so we're going to continue now with morgan j says to be red hi abraham i hope you're well i am doing okay my name is morgan i'm currently a third year student of animation and video games in france i really like modeling in general rigging and sculpting i like to get some feedback on some feedback on my portfolio and my different modeling thank you have a nice day first of all he shows a couple of uh objects here this is a really nice Best Buy, and this is actually a great exercise. If you guys are watching this and you're like at the intermediate level of modeling, doing a vehicle, an electric scooter, a Best Buy, um, I wouldn't go for a motorcycle just yet, but maybe like a go-kart, like things like that don't have as many pieces. That's a great way to test your modeling, texturing, and rendering skills. This is great, man. This is a great, great portfolio piece. 
a couple of details or a couple of things that I can see uh, right out of the bat is like, again, the, the metal edgeware, it's everywhere. Be more precise on where you want to have it. I can see you did it on the, on the like blue paint, but there it's, it's pretty much on, on all of the leather parts. And I would also expect to see some uh, like damage on the wheels because right now everything looks like slightly damaged, slightly used and the wheels look perfect. So um, make sure to also include a little bit of like dirt, dust, scratches, something. Uh, usually rubber when it's fresh like yours, it looks very, very black, very, very dark. But when it gets like um, damaged, it gets goes to this like gray and ashy color. So try try something like that. I have a machine gun. Ooh, wow, this is really cool. Stylized. It's kind of like stylized, but not that stylized at the same time. It's really interesting. I've never seen something like this. Is this hand painted? Did you hand paint everything? I don't think so. It does look like a like a texture, but like stylized texture with like a looks very good, man. I like this. I really really like this. I actually don't have a lot of uh, a lot of. Uh, or did you sculpt and baked everything and then? Ooh, did you sculpt everything? That would be pretty pretty cool. Let's take a look at your portfolio. I really like that one. It's very original. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, so uh, first thing out of the gate, um, this guy right here, not the greatest anatomy. It's still a couple of things to do, and you have really cool stuff. So I probably would take this guy out because I don't see him here. So that means, or that tells me, that you know that he's not like up to the level of everything else. Like all of these guys are renders, and then this guy's like a viewport screenshot. So take that one out and replace it with anything else. To be honest, like this gun right here will be perfect. Um, this is <laughs> very cool. Imperial Gallic helmet. Nice. A little bit of action, right? I like that one. This one's also pretty cool. Samurai. Again, clean, simple renders. No need to overcomplicate things. Um, yeah, they're not as precise, right? Like I can see their CG. They're, they don't look as real because of some proportions and some rendering things, but uh, it's still a really good uh, model. I, I can see that working. Uh, I've talked about this before. Doing this sort of things like exercises and stuff like that, it's fine for your social media. And unless you're you're like one of the guys that does this sort of stuff, it might be a little bit better to just um, to just like use this in a project. Like you can you can do a project where you're using this wall as a texture, and then on the on the making of you can show, hey, I actually did the tiling of the texture. Okay, that's fine because again, this looks more like an exercise or like a homework. Um, this is interesting. Japanese ski concept. This is actually uh, a great example of, uh, of again, the, the sort of like exercises that you can do when you're learning. This is actually, I, I just uh, finished uh, the semester over here with my guys. And this is one of the things that I uh, like, um, like make them do. I, I show them how to do like a skateboard, model, texture, paint, everything. The bump's a little bit high on this one. You can see it looks like a, like a paint layer rather than like sticker. So the bump's a little bit high, but I love the texturing work, man. It looks really, really realistic. This guy right here, amazing. So yeah, congratulations. This one came out really nice. I like this. Uh, the knife looks great as well. It goes with the gun, right? Like, uh, you did bake the whole thing. Wow, so these wood things are, are sculpted? Nice, nice. That's great, man. I love it. This is a very unique style. I've never seen a style like this. Again, it, it looks, I don't know, like stylized, realistic. Well, it's not realistic, but it's a very, like it's very yours, right? So so I love it. I I, I think these are really, really strong ones because again, I, I've seen similar things like Clash Royale, Clash of Clans, stuff like that, but, but you have this really interesting stylized effect. I, I love it. I would suggest you keep pushing that because that's gonna separate you from everyone else and that's gonna give you uh, again, your own unique like twist to things. This is a great piano. I've always wanted to model a piano. I've never done one. Uh, this looks very, very, very nice. Oh, I love the work on the texture here. Yeah, this is great. One single map, nice. Uh, I'm imagining like a Western, um, like a Western stylized game with all of this stuff of yours. Like do a small scene. You already have this like table. Do a small scene with the piano. Like have the piano, uh, maybe do like a little bar or something. Um, this render is not that great. Is this like, oh, it's because it's a sketch map. Okay, yeah. So yeah, because you, you already have some really, really strong models. And I think you can like tell a story with those models. And that would be great. Okay, this one, I think the colors kind of like 
break the the acid a little bit because I, I thought the other ones looked really cool because they were those like modern old things. This one looks a little bit weird. And I, I, I'm not a fan of this like border. I know you're trying different things, but I actually prefer this one. Like just a solid color is, is, is better or or even like no color. Were you using colors? No. Yeah, like no color. Because again, sometimes we, we get a little bit too obsessed with the presentation of the pieces and the pieces are the more important things. So, so you should focus on those. Yeah, man, you have a really, really cool style. You know what? I would love to see like a character done in this style. Like wh why not try to do, you know, the, the Pinocchio movie from Guillermo del Toro. Uh, it's actually like I'm recording this the day it's releasing on Netflix, so December 9th. And um, you could do like a small character using the, the techniques and, and things that you have, like a puppet or something. It will look pretty, pretty cool, I think. So yeah, congratulations, Morgan. Really, really cool. Really cool. Let's go now with Ankit Vishwakarma. Vakarma. Hey, Abraham Ankit Vishwakarma here. I'm working on new personal work, so I uploaded this for feedback. Let's take a look. I think you've submitted before, right, my friend? Okay. Okay. I can see what you're going for. It's a it's a sort of like a I guess you're going for a realistic character, which is fine. There's a couple of things that we need to do. And I'm actually going to do something that apparently we don't do because not a lot of people share works in progress. But uh, I'm going to do a little bit of a pinch of this. So, move my microphone over here so you guys can hear me. So whenever we're doing a character, uh, we need to understand like the proportions, right? Proportions are probably the, the easiest thing that we need to, to fix and check. So if we divide the hat, the head in half and we divide the center of the eye, remember that we need to divide the face into thirds. So that will be like one, two, then the third one, right? So, so it's one, two, and the third, as you can see, this first third is relatively short. This one is a little bit longer, and then this one is really long. So some of the proportions on the face could be uh, fixed. I think what we need to do here is we need to bring the nose a little bit lower, and we probably need to make it a little bit wider because I think I think right now the face is a little bit like narrow on the on the on that part. The lips do look a little bit like big on the on the upper side. I will need to see a side view to make sure to to see how this thing is. Uh, the ears, remember that the ears usually go to this level right here and to this level right here. So they go between the, the first and the second third like this. And um, usually the corner of the mouth is aligned with the eyes. In this case, the corner of the mouth is a little bit closer, which is fine. Some people have smaller mouths, some people have bigger mouths. Um, but yeah, there's some, some proportion things that we definitely definitely need to, uh, to address. Other than that, I do think the sigmatic arch or arc that you are like having here, it's a little bit too much. You can see the, the shine right here. That's a little bit too heavy. The pommel is usually down here. So, so you would not see like this like big eyebrow here. Uh, I do think the eyes are a little bit high. Uh, another thing you can do here is once you're in Photoshop, you can actually like grab the eyes right here. I can press Control T, click, and we can just distort. Like remove them and see that like I just move them like slightly to the side a little bit lower just a little bit see see how much like pixels we have there and the, and I think that that fixes it a little bit same for the for the nose as I was mentioning like you can take the nose here and be like hey you know what like this nose should be bigger and a little bit lower see that so if you squint a little bit or if you like zoom out a little bit, you should see the proper proportions. And uh, that's one of the ways that you're going to be able to kind of like find what or not things are um, exactly as you as you need them to be. So, yeah, it's a, it's a good progress. I would definitely keep on working. I'm not sure where you're doing the sculpting, but I would I would give it another go at the sculpting before jumping onto the textures. The textures actually look quite nice, very natural looking. Um, definitely need to, to improve the eyes and the eyelashes and the eyebrows or yeah because right now it's just clay if you're gonna have to be doing hair like x-gen or something start playing around with that but uh yeah it's, uh, it's looking it's looking good usually the lower lip is a little bit thicker than the upper lip that might be another point that you want to uh, check out 
yeah, keep on working on this. And uh, if you don't like it, sometimes I I'm not saying you do this uh, because I I'm not saying that your work is bad or anything. But I, I remember when I was learning like faces and anatomy, I would like start a project. And then if I didn't like how it was uh, looking or if I thought I needed more work, I would just start over. Because sometimes the starting over allows you to fix things from the very beginning that might take longer to fix once you're uh, further up ahead. Very good. Now let's finish up with Endal Kinfer for today. Endalk, um, we have a little letter here. Let's take a look. Hey, Abraham, my name is Endalk Alpha. Okay. Kinfer, I am from Eth Ethiopia. Nice. And a civil engineer full-time, but really passionate about to be an, an artist, especially a 3D model or a character designer as a new career. Okay. Uh, working on Maya since one and a half years, on and off, back after working hours at home using tutorials from YouTube, and your channel is so helpful. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. It's not only my channel, it's the whole team's channel, but um, I'm, I'm usually the guy who uh, posts more frequently. I'm grateful for that since there's, not, uh, there's no schools that I can take and get a formal education. Hope you will answer the following questions of mine for now so I can work on them and start creating my portfolio. Muchas gracias. De nada. There's a Maya file, which is work on progress and a pure ref file. Okay. How is my mesh economy? Paneling and stuff. Uh, those are not terms that I normally hear or use. If by economy you mean the amount, I'm going to take a look and I'll let you know. By paneling, I hope you mean topology, which is the flow of polygons. Again, I'm going to take a look. How many angons is too many or not acceptable at all? Unless they're a cap, like the cap to a cylinder or to a flat area, angons are not acceptable. So we should always try to remove them. How many triangles is a no-no or memory expensive or is it okay if it doesn't show pinching on the object? It's a tricky question because it always depends on the project and on the platform that you're going to be deploying. If it's a commercial, if it's a film, if it's a game for a, for a phone, for the Switch, for PlayStation, like it depends. But again, it as long as you're not using more than you should, like if you have a good reason to have the amount of triangles that you're using, then that probably means that you're in a good uh, in a good situation. Is it the case to use many separate panels to create an object? Um, yeah, it's, it's perfectly fine. And yeah, you can use as many as you want. Download this. Open the Maya file and let's open the pure ref to see what you're doing. Oh, you're doing a car. Okay. Car is one of those things. It's like a, I always tell students, car is like a, like your graduation exam for a, um, for a modeler. Like if you can model a car, you can pretty much model anything uh, because they're tricky. They have interesting curvatures. They have uh, a lot of panels, as you mentioned, a lot of pieces, uh, which is perfectly fine. So, for a, an object like this, I wouldn't be surprised if you have like 200, 300 different pieces. It's, it's perfectly, perfectly normal. Let's take a look at the model. Okay, the model's not bad. You can see that you are at 2 million polygons. For a film uh, element, it's fine. Okay, you are subdividing, which is fine. Let me let me get rid of subdivision. Press number one. Okay, so, so without subdivision, we're only at 212,000 points, which is, again, really, really like approximate. So that's, that's perfectly fine. Um, we gotta be very careful. Like this thing right here, that's something that we want to be really, really, really careful about because you're letting the subdivision do a lot of work for you. And you usually want to be able to handle that with your own geometry. So, so geometry speaking, this should be an edge loop that goes around, not a square. This is a very, very common concept. Topology lesson for, for everyone. So um, when doing corners, when doing corners, if you want the curvature to follow this way, you need to, you need to make sure that the topology follows this way, okay? So it needs to flow and create this sort of thing. And yes, you would have a lot of lines going like this. For instance, here you might have like a couple of lines like this, and this is a very common exercise. I I, I did this before, I think earlier this year, um, where I show you how to study topology, and this is a good way. Like you go into into like a Photoshop or any like drawing software, Krita, if you don't want to pay for Photoshop, you're like, okay, how would I solve this error right here? Well, I know that this is a plane, right? Like all of this section, that's a plane right there that I need to have edges holding that plane. So I know that my topology should float this way. And then here we have a curve. So this curve goes back. So that means, that tells me that this section right here should be curved as well. So if we're following this, we should have something like this, right? Curves. Well, this, this guys go down and 
and these guys go like this. So no angles, everything is squares. And then over here, again, we have another curve, okay? So we're gonna have to draw another curve there. This one would go up and to the side. And then here, we might have a small little pinch here, okay? Perfectly normal, but we need everything to flow. So you study the topology, you, you sketch out your topology and you find out how best to approach it so that when you do it, you don't get this sort of weird pinch right here. I'm not saying this is the worst, but it could be way cleaner, okay? Again, this could be way cleaner. Let me see if I can show it to you real quick. So I'm gonna start with just plane. So 90 degree angle. Actually, you know what? Because you already captured this like quite nicely. So if I grab this guy and I just make a live surface or a live object, I can actually use my quadro to redraw topology here. So it's like, okay, I know that this topology should flow like this, right? Because I want a nice little circle on this area. We make this thing flow down. And then I know, because we have this very hard edge right there, we're gonna have this hard edge. We need to make sure that this flows right there. This edge, of course, we're, is gonna flow down. This. And then in here, if you remember the, the reference, it's also round. So we need to somehow capture a round thing over here. How can we do that? Well, same way as we did the other one. Got a couple of extra ones. It's gonna be a round. So when I press number three, as it becomes round, it becomes smooth. Now we can push this up. Another edge right there. Remember when two edge loops are really close to one another, then things flow in a, in a nicer way. Here we can add another line and another line. That's it. Look at the flow of this piece, right? We get this round effect here, a round effect here, and then we get this line right here. You may be like, well, can we make this harder? Yeah, we can just grab this thing and, and for instance, like uh, do a bevel, keep it small. Look how how now nice this thing flows, right? So, so that's the way you need to think about topology when doing this uh, this sort of stuff, because it's gonna allow you to keep really, really clean topology. Well, look at the difference again. I'm not saying yours is like bad, but it can be better, right? So you can see that the difference in topology, how this one is not flowing down, and this one is flowing over here, and then we have this one right here. So. So that's the kind of stuff you want to do. Now, um, it's fine if you have multiple pieces. Like here, this is really complicated. Like this thing that you did here, I I am I feel a little bit sorry that you had to go through this because normally you don't have to do this. Like if the card is made out of a lot of different parts, do each part separately, okay? So for instance here, this is one part, the door is one part, the hood is one part, this thing is another part, this thing right here, like where it cuts right there, that's another part, the, the upper like... Uh, Thing over here is another part. Like, if you need to split these things into multiple parts, split them. Yes, they need to flow into each other. So, for instance, even though these are two different parts, you do need to make sure that this line flows nicely into the next one. So, what some people like to do is they'll do everything in a single line, very similar to how you did it, and then they'll like split it or cut it or something. Um, I can see that you do have the idea of how to do. It. It's just a matter of polishing a couple of parts. Okay, it's a good model. I would I would suggest since you're already so far ahead. Just keep going, finish it, and on the next one that you do, take into consideration all of these things that I'm uh, saying right here. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this one, I think. Yep. So yeah, that's it for this one, guys. I would like to thank you all for your time and for your patience. Hopefully all of the tips and all of the feedback that I am giving is helpful to all of you. And um, just to remind you, make sure to leave a like, share, subscribe, comment. Anything is uh, helpful for us here in the channel. Tomorrow, we're going to be back with uh, more portfolio. We're going to keep looking at the rest of the students right here. So thank you very much, and I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.